1985, this kind of technology wasn't too bad. Must follow a camper here. Has a little monitor display here that shows the battery level and the water level. And for the old fridge, showed the pilot light status. Again, 1985, that's all right. This is 2011. Time for something better. All right, let's come in here and take a look at the first version of my brand new Westphalia power meter. Go ahead and turn on the backlight there. Take a look, we see that we've got three battery voltages now. One for each of the batteries I have here in the van. And you see we have this four by 20 character LCD display. Got a little push button switch. And that is all powered down below here. We take a look in the cabinet. Turn on the light. See I've got a little box there. And we'll go ahead and open that box and up. And now you can see it's an Arduino microcontroller. And I've got a micro SD shield that SparkFun makes on there. Some circuitry to read the analog voltages. And just a little breadboard space. And finally, you can see USB client cable coming there. And that comes up to this pretty slick little panel mount USB port right there. And that's all the components I really have for this thing. You're probably wondering why I've gone through all this trouble. Well, you can see that bottom cabinet there that used to have the stock Westphalia fridge. I removed that and got one of these really nice ARB fridges. You can see it's holding the temperature at 33 Fahrenheit right now. It's pretty slick, but it uses a decent amount of power, and that power has to come from somewhere. And that somewhere comes from auxiliary batteries. So let me go ahead and show you how I've got that whole system wired up. All right. We obviously have the starting battery underneath the passenger side seat, sort of a standard interstate battery underneath there. And that's what the alternator is charging. So then what I have going is a Blue Sea automatic charging relay, which is underneath the uh, driver's side battery compartment. And then I also have a worker 44 amp hour battery, which is basically one of the Odyssey PC 1200 knockoffs for a lot less money, about half the price. And so what happens is we start the van, or actually if either of these battery banks are above 13 and a half volts, uh, the Blue Sea combiner waits a certain amount of time and then it combines them and just puts them in parallel. And then it does basically the opposite of that when uh, the high voltage above 13 and a half volts goes away. So that's how you get the charging between the two systems. That's how you keep them uh, from, make sure you have a starting battery that always works and gets you out of there. So in addition to that, underneath here, I have the Blue Sea big old rotary switch. And it has three states. It has the off, which manually separates them. Uh, on is sort of letting the ACR do its thing. And then combine is a manual combine of the two batteries. As it turns out, uh, 44 amp hours is not quite enough to get you through a longer camping trip, maybe a several day camping trip. So where the fridge used to be in the cabinet here, I got a jumbo 125 amp hour marine battery from Walmart for about 75 bucks. So I've got that underneath there. And then what I need to do is be able to combine that with my other auxiliary battery. So let's take a look over in this cabinet. Take a look here. See, I've got another uh, product from Blue Sea. It's their uh, fuse panel. It's a nice little product. And then what I have over here is another switch. Now this switch lets me combine my two house batteries either way I want. The top one is off. That's saying that none of the loads are going to get any power from either of the batteries. To the left, it's using battery one, which was the first battery I showed you. 
and to the right, battery two, which is the big Walmart battery. And at the bottom, one and two, which is how I normally run. In that case, I have about 170 amp hours of uh, power. So as you can see, this is a little bit of a complicated system. You look at all the permutations of switching the two house batteries together, uh, switching the ACR on, off, or letting it do its thing automatically. You can wind up with a lot of different states and be pretty confused if you have a bad uh, system in your power. So I wanted a way to take a look at all that and make sense of it. And that's how I wound up with my power meter. So right now you can see that the starting battery is about 12 and a half volts and the two auxiliary batteries are at about 12.4 volts. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is start the ignition. Go ahead and we'll see the starting battery voltage increase up to about 14 volts. The alternator is driving that. We see the two auxiliary batteries are still at 12.4. The reason for that is that the automatic charging relay hasn't kicked in yet. All right, so it's been about 30 seconds, and you can see now that the ACR turned on. You can see that the auxiliary battery voltages just jumped up. They're a little bit lower than the starting battery because it's flowing current over to them. Pretty cool. All right, the van's still running. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the effect of switching over just to battery one. I'm gonna go ahead here and turn this up to battery one. There we go. See that now just the starting the aux one are connected. Surface charge on aux two is starting to bleed off. Heading back down towards its 12 and a half volt level. I'll go ahead and switch back to both. There we go. And then now just battery two. Pretty slick. Obviously then if I go ahead and turn the van off, go ahead and see all the battery voltages equalize because they're still connected by the ACR for now. They're all starting to bleed off their surface charge. Alright, there's one more interesting electrical component I've got going on here. I have a CTEC 7002 battery charger which is wired in to the shore power inside the van so that when I plug in it automatically goes ahead and charges. Let's see how that works out with this battery monitoring system. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the shore power. We'll take a look at what these voltages do here. So you can see there that the auxiliary 1 and 2 battery voltages are getting very close to 13 volts. Basically the, uh, tr the charger I have has about 8 different modes. I think it's in one of the trickle charging modes right now, just slowly uh, ramping up the, the voltage, just dumping some current in there. Uh, you can see that it wasn't enough though to actually cause the, the ACR to combine. So it's nice to be able to be plugged into short power and get a good sense of what the actual voltages are doing. Alright, you can see that with the, the charger going, the voltage has gotten high enough and the ACR has actually combined. So now I'm charging the starting battery in addition to the auxiliary batteries. Nice. So one of the last features that I briefly alluded to, which I think is probably the coolest feature of all, and you don't even get to see it here, is the microSD data logger I've got going. So I've got it configured right now to every 10 seconds log the voltages from the starting and both auxiliary batteries. 
So right now what I have to do is reach in there, grab the micro SD card out. Cool thing then is you can plot that data up and get to see some cool trends. Okay, as you can see I plotted the data. We have three lines, blue, green, and red for the three batteries. And you can see that there's definitely some things happening here. So let's take a little closer look at what's going on. Let's look at the beginning of the plot first. Starting at the left of the plot, you can see that the batteries are pretty much at steady state. The starting battery is at about 12.7 volts, uh, just sort of a nice rest state, nice high voltage. And then the two auxiliary batteries are at about 12.4 volts, and they're under a load at that point. So the voltages are definitely a little bit low. They're also drained a little bit. Then about 0.1 hours into it, you see that the engine starts. And immediately after that happens, the starting battery voltage spikes right up and gets up to about 14 volts. Then there's a little bit of a delay at 30 seconds or so that I described earlier. And then the automatic charging relay kicks in. So it closes the relay. And what that does is it puts the starting battery in parallel now with the, the auxiliary batteries. And so what you see is that those green and red lines jump up and as the current starts to flow over from the starting battery to them, you also see that the starting battery voltage gets pulled down a little bit. And then there's a little bit of a difference uh, and they're basically both increasing back up as they're getting lots of current dumped into them from the alternator. It goes on for a little while, then I go ahead and I turn off the engine and we see that all three of those battery voltages start to decay. Uh, they're doing so all together and then all, you see the blue line deviate and that's what happens when the the ACR then uh, separates again so there you have it there's a nice little uh, pictorial description of what's going on when I start and stop the engine there you have it it's amazing what a person will do to have a cold beer but it's also been a lot of fun it's been my first foray into using a uh, Arduino microcontroller I'd say it's been a huge success so far and as you can imagine, there's lots of improvements in the, uh, the works. I'm going to start tapping into different signals to determine exactly when I'm on shore power, when the ACR is actually closed, and add some current sensing that will give me state of charge estimates. And then one of the very cool features I'm going to be adding is a water tank sensor, an analog one, that will actually give me good readings for that. So, this is just the first video. Hopefully there will be plenty more to come. And hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one. So long.